I want our prayer enterprise, our labor in prayer to go beyond trying to get to becoming. So when you enter that mode of prayer, there is probably no prayer point. You just want to tarry in prayer. When you enter that mode of prayer, you can be praying and you are most likely going to forget where you are. Because there is a yearning on your inside. There is a nature you want to touch. You want to become all you are ordained to be. But you cannot become that until prayer affords you the chance to bring that dimension of you into time. Prayer is the only vehicle that you can bring into time everything described concerning you. When we give ourselves to prayer, when we give ourselves to traveling, it is one of the most secured ways to outgrow captivity. Everything that is your challenge, you can continue to arrange prayer points. What, what do we pray? Anytime you need money, you write it down. You write the scripture down. What do you pray? Anytime there is attack, you write it down. Write the scripture down. You have a catalog of prayer points. But if you grow, if you grow, hmm, the Holy Ghost will start fetching from your bank of prayer. No, no prayer point in that place again. We're just praying because we love prayer. We're just praying. You know, I walked outside while we were praying. It became obvious to me that a category of us just come here because we want to somehow be in contact with the warmth of priesthood. They are already so comfortable that they are not on fire. And they are not disturbed that they are not on fire. The only thing that they just want is let me always be around where people are praying. So that at, at least. And so in that, in that two hours, you just be doing like a haradosh, fa va vana, mana. Then the person will, will yawn for another five minutes. Mana huva, scatter debi. When you see some of us walking and praying, it's because we don't want to allow the flesh to enter a state of rest. If you, you go and sit down somewhere there in a state like this, only your, your soul will now travel. You will forget that you came to pray. Then you will now remember and, and shake your head for five minutes again. Who are you deceiving? You, you think we don't like sitting down? We are walking because we don't want the flesh to ever get any, any moment of rest. Uh, if, if you don't know what happened during prayer, is war. The flesh is, is, is warring against the spirit and the spirit also is challenging the flesh. You too, do something physically to ensure that the flesh does not prosper. Why do you see us change postures when we pray? Because if you stay in one posture for long, ah, flesh will take rest from there. Why do we pray aloud? Because if you, if you are not praying aloud, you are most likely going to flow into thoughts and imagination and forget that you are in the presence of God. This is why all of these strategies are on ground. The reason why we are praying aloud is not a competition. It's not for anybody's voice to be louder than anybody. It's because we don't want the flesh to take over. Because even this small time we came to give to God, the flesh is also fighting still. And you, mind you, you have the flesh. He has all the time since morning. Only this small time, he still refused. How can we be effective in our priesthood? Somebody comes to prayer with Chungom by this side. You chew three times and then you... <laughs> I'm just looking at strange cases outside. What is going on there? Well, you know, I can't ask any because I'm, I, you are an adult, you came by yourself. You know, <laughs> somebody was corrected the other day, and I had, I had a case of somebody who now said, did, did anybody bring me here? You came by yourself. Yes. <laughs> you are an adult. You are old enough to know what you want to do part time. People are, are sleeping, sleeping, and claiming that they are in the spirit. So you, you now try to wake them up. They now say, I know where I am. <laughs> There's no need. Just sleep at home. Eh? Don't, don't waste your time. De see, and let me tell you one truth. If you continue to come, to come, to come every time, and your only work is to come and enjoy heat, eh? you just come and stay where there is fire, you tap small heat, then you walk back. With time, you will become heat resistant. Ah, it's only a few brothers that know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> 
a time will come eh, you will become resistant to heat because that number of that, that, that temperature that can that can fire you small before your you you will need let me share something with you let's say you run you took a, a lap a race from here to this wall yesterday today you came and ran from here to this wall let me ask you a question as of tomorrow well let's say you have done that consecutively for one month straight you will just come every day run from here to this wall as of the next month if you want to grow hmm, would you maintain this same distance that you, when you run now you no longer even feel you have exercise do you know that your body can accommodate a particular threshold of pressure have you seen children that they, they, they keep flogging them from small flogging them a time came he will come like this and, 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 and do like this then the classmate will be clapping for him because out of the threshold of pain he has endured for long he has developed resistance hey you, you just come to the house of God and come and sit down no intention to obey God every word you are listening to the rebellious nature is developing a resistance to that word so that the scripture that has entered you that was supposed to become life in you will now become a resistance to God so in the day of deliverance when they say the Bible said something in you will say the Bible also said oh I've gone to preach to people before and they say ah, me that want to tell them about they say Op open to the book of Isaiah let me show you something Ah, the word, the word that is in him has become darkness. He says, if the light that is in you be darkness, how great is that darkness? Fear the presence if it is not changing you. Fear coming there. Because Satan can use it to alter even the progression of your transformation. You can become resistant because you have tarried there long enough and it did not achieve its desired end. How long have you been praying? See, I want to have a very sincere walk with God. I want to be able to ask God, why did this thing happen? I want to be able to ask him after I'm done praying and what I asked for did not happen. I want to be able to get an explanation. This is why. A sincere walk. You know the two criteria is, is, is spelled out. You don't need Rema to interpret it. Number one. He says, that prayer that is done in the spirit and number two, in truth. In truth. Something as little as offering. Offering. That is not so much a spiritual labor. The condition for simple offering is that when you want to bring an offering before the Lord and you remember you have an offense against your brother. He says, don't, don't even bring the offering. Go back and make peace with your brother before you bring the offering. Now tell me what the demand of prayer can be. This is, this is about bringing something that is of men before God will accept. He says, check your heart whether there is any bitterness, any envy, any hurt against your brother. He said, go and make peace before you come. Now imagine the condition that must be on ground to get the audience of the great monarch. Sometimes when we come to pray, the first one hour should, should have been dedicated to soul searching. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. It seems the scripture has made it clear. It means whether you prayed for five hours, if there is iniquity, he will not hear you. And what Satan wants to do is that at our old age, we will now hate God because we know we prayed for many hours of our life and the dividends of prayer will be far from our borders. You now see, does God really answer prayers? Every experiment has procedures. If you violate any procedure, you cannot get the result. The procedure of prayer has been laid out. The greatest investment of prayer is what state of your heart is reaching out because you are trying to reach out to a spirit and that spirit is looking for a particular kind of disposition of your heart blessed are the merciful blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy I hear my generation crying oh God show me mercy 
and this man that is crying to for God to show him mercy, his first prayer point is that any place my attack is coming from. <laughs> there are some prayer points. If spirits want to answer it, people will fall down inside church and die. Tear like that. Because somebody there is perceiving somebody around here as his enemy. And he's just looking at him and saying, I just they watch that girl. The day where her cup go full. So we we'll now raise the prayer point. Any enemy, known or unknown, any friendly enemy, and it's that kind of prayer point that gets the loudest prayer. They say friendly enemy. Somebody say, hmm, ah, yeah. <laughs> See, we smoke them out by fire. Then people start shouting. Mind you, your perceived enemy, emphasis on the word perceived. Your perceived enemy is the least of your challenge because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Because we know this one, the weapons of our warfare cannot be carnal. Have you gone back to labor room? Because just in case they gave birth to you in St. Gerard, you are not born yet. <laughs> There's another labor room only on the peak of Zion and the midwives there are spirits. They are the ones that tear. They are the ones that put pressure until this nature produces another nature. There is another you that will come out of this fleshy one. The day you step out, it's like the transfiguration. Suddenly, everything that holds sway over you, there is a version of you that captivity does not prosper on. Satan wants you to continue to remain in this version and be crying every day. Lord, intervene! But there is another version. If this spirit that rose up Christ from the dead can dwell in your mortal body, the Bible says it will quicken. To quicken means it will change you from within. Oh, I refuse to... See, if a child is born, he is born looking like everything that is a, a, a reflection of his foundation. It is that child's responsibility to be born again. This is what Jesus was trying to introduce when he asked Nicodemus about the concept of being born again. Although he was a scholar, he does not understand what it meant to be born again. He said, shall I enter into my mother's womb again? And Jesus said, how did you become a teacher of the law? You are teaching other people and yet you don't know these truths. Hey, we, we, have, we have many, many renovated old men. We have many renovated fleshy men. Old house. They just carry white paint and, and rub it. And you can still see all kinds of map stains in the inside. And Jesus is saying, this building will not stand. There's another building that comes until you destroy this temple. Only then will I raise it up after three days. This temple is corrupted. This temple has all kinds of infinity or affinity rather to sin affinity to, to to tendencies that are directly antagonistic of god's position and so we must subscribe to another version and that version is only in zion and they say the day god will number the list of his people he will say this one was born in zion Oh, may the Lord call our names when they begin to mention the citizens. You know what makes you a legitimate citizen of a place? Af apart from other means and other ways, you know, to become citizens, one of it is birth. This one was born in Zion. So you become a Zionite. We are citizens of the city of the Lord. The first birth, you didn't have control over it. You just open your eye and discovered you have been born. The second bet is your choice. You are the one to choose whether you like this particular version. And mind you, it will be painful to let this one go. Because there will be small, small advantages that you have in this fallen vessel. Some of you, your beauty can fetch you so much. Because every day you go out, there are over, over 70 ungodly, untamed Philistines who would be looking at you with saliva in their mouth following you, willing to empty their bank account. Over and over again you have experienced such and now you call it favor. You see there is something about me. Why is it that it's only guys that are blessing you? 
Ah, it's not favor. It's not favor, sister. <laughs> it's not favor. You will know when it's favor. When a man does not need anything from you, the person does not even want to have your number. Something around you continues to put them under pressure to do you good. A brother paid for your hair. A brother bought you phone. Another brother bought shoe. Another brother paid for your house rent. Another brother, you see, there is something about my life. Sister, there is nothing. Mark my words, there is nothing. It's no favor. It's not favor. Hey, you, you will carry that, this great opportunity, this great ability. You will lay it down. And the day you lay it down, something you will call you Mumu Ka, you are a fool. Say, hey. And the devil will teach you such a bitter lesson, at least in the first three months of your decision. Your phone will become quiet. It, it will be like you put your phone on flight mode. All the areas where your, your help used to come and those help to prove to you that there was a technology that kept them in view. The day you decide to face God, suddenly they will show you that you cannot belong to God and mammon at the same time. It will be like you are, you are passing through the furnace. Hey, can I share something with you? If you have ever enjoyed the cucumber and garlic of Egypt, you must be taken through a wilderness before you reach your promised land. That wilderness is to remove all the taste. Ah, and some people, they will take three steps into wilderness. They will say, Kai! I'd rather go back. <laughs> you know what the three, the, 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 that three step is just three weeks. Some people journeyed for 40 years. They were looking for a city whose maker is the Lord. <laughs> you know the gospel that, that is attracting us to the cross the, the devil kept one bluetooth speaker under the cross now and he's playing one message he said come the message is shouting come to Jesus so you will think it's God that is inviting you he said come and then when you keep your ears to say what, what, who is inviting us there they say if you are poor if you are broke if you are going through shame and stagnation Come, we know a God who is able to turn your life around. An ungodly man that has not discovered the gravity or, and the weight of his iniquity and does not also know the kind of price that was paid to secure his eternal security will now think that he wants a change of his finance and now come and stand before the cross and cry with Qatar for five minutes and the spirits that invited him are busy laughing they say this one don't know Jesus because if you follow Jesus you too must carry a cross <laughs> who, who removed cross from the way who told you that there is rice and beans waiting you know they say newcomers come first timers uh, many of you that is why you are changing church every Sunday all the first timers wait behind here then they take you to one room and share one letter for you it's rice and chicken and you are eating and saying this God, this God, this God we like see in the kingdom they will not share rice for you hey as soon as you enter wilderness is your first class the reason for the wilderness is anybody who puts his hands to the plow and looks back they say it's not fit know myself in those days see I'm telling you somebody's story listen to me in those days at least twice a month I'm in Dubai and I'm looking at the lady see her skin you will never be able to she, she showed me some of the hotels they used to lodge her my god I'm talking about part of the best hotels in Dubai somebody who have tasted of this level Ah, Egypt has shown her the bounty, the wealth of Pharaoh. She has drank from the golden cup. It amazed me that she was not crying. She was, she was, she was counting it. 
an opportunity to test her loyalty for God. Where is your cross, brother? Have you been born in Zion? Because a day will come when they will list the chronicles of those who are his. And they will say, such a one, such one, such one was born in Zion. That day, they, they, will, never, they will not remember that you live in Kaduna. There is only one city. If you don't belong there, you have no reference. They don't want to know whether you, are, you your own, is a choir bomb or you are in Port Harcourt. That those areas don't have bearing in the economy of spirit. When they began to give list of places that are real, you will not find Benue State among it. You will find cities, ancient cities. Ah, they say this, that one is a Babylonian. He's, he's Nebuchadnezzar that is his king. He is a citizen, but he is only a citizen of a rebellious, a rebellious civilization. We have Egyptians in our midst, many Egyptians. And their way is the way of captivity and wickedness. If you are with an Egyptian, you, you can only be friends as long as you are not doing better than him. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let me explain a kind of person. And what I want to share now is, is in, in, in my own context, I call it operating system. I have learned from the beginning of last year to categorize people into four basic operating systems. If I see a lady just, you know, walking around, so conscious of the way she's walking, you know, her eyelash is, there's a particular length, her, her nails, you know, um, so much, so much, you know, artificiality involved, so much consciousness. She's always holding her phone to show the camera of the phone that is an iPhone, you know. Uh, there's a behavior, you can't hide it. She's, she has put herself under pressure to, to sound in a particular way which is not reflective of conversation from a place of rest. She's always trying to prove a point. When I meet those ones, there is, there is one operating system that I, I call them. And I see some brothers in that operating system too. They cannot sleep. They can wake up in the middle of the night just to check how many people have viewed a particular picture, whether they are talking about them. Anytime people are talking about them, they like it. So what they are always drawn to is controversy. Anything that can cause people to talk. If you see them dressing, their reason for dressing is to create conversation. So if everybody is doing something as normal as this, they are most likely going to do like this so that everybody will say, who is that one? Then uh, they are happy. They say, hmm. I, I, I know who you are. It's just it's one operating system you, you fell under. There is another category of people. Today is not for operating system. It will deviate me. We are talking about the cross. If you have not come before the real cross, you are, you, it's only that cross that can give birth to you in Zion. It's only that cross that can produce your true identity. I have told you that Satan has a Bluetooth speaker. Huh? <laughs> that Bluetooth speaker are many champion preachers. They have pulpits too. They are busy calling people and say, come to Jesus. And the people never came to Jesus. It was not Jesus that was their Lord. In the day of reckoning, many will come and say, in thy name. And Jesus will say, I never knew you. You were never part of the citizen of this celestial city. Oh, there is a city far beyond the stars. There is a city where patriarchs have journeyed to. You will not be the first to go there. Your only labor is to be one of them. Men have paid prices and some of them have become foundations of those city. Huh. I long for those days when you just you just lock yourself somewhere. Maka kuvers kevela habano skapa papa kuba hata kivaras skapa papa papa poko skava when you are praying as you are joining in this part something in you 
is changing because everybody's destiny has a prerequisite capacity de demand uh, level volume of prayer that is necessary to unlock their true potential anytime you have not hit that volume of prayer no matter what was locked up on your inside because before you arrive the bible says there are treasures in 18 vessels there is something that was hidden in everybody so that the excellency of power will be of the lord and you will never be able to discover that treasure until you sell all you have the scripture says the kingdom of god is like unto a man who discovered a precious treasure in a land and went and sold all he has and came to buy that one land that he discovered the treasure you will not be able to secure your true identity until you are ready to mortgage every other thing to touch jesus because actually that treasure every man has is a deposit of god on their inside are you ready to sell it all to buy him tonight In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever. Still my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. In the cross, in the cross be my glory ever till my I belong to the city of God I am numbered among those who have translated from darkness into light. I am numbered among the citizens of this celestial city. Oh, so many people are trying to relocate. Many people are trying to run from a perceived place of disadvantage. And the greatest city to become a citizen of is not a reference in their life. Till my raptured soul shall find Take the next three minutes where you are and pray. Just you and God. Nobody, nobody is actually looking at you. It's just you and God. Only both of you. My times are in your hands. My life is in your hands. My desire is in your hands. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. Everything else must wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Give me you. Everything else must wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. 
Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. 